Over the next seven days, we will be canal hopping for invasives, wading roadside flats, and sneaking through backyard ponds, all in hopes to get one step closer to Florida's urban fishing scene. Sit back wieners and join us as we set out to cast concrete. Well, Wieners, we've traveled a few clicks up north to Central Florida. We are in West Palm Beach right now. We had to abandon that south bite because, well, there was no south bite. We were experiencing quite the lull. Bad news is yesterday sucked, but today is a new day. That is the good news. We can wipe the slate clean and start over. Unlike most anglers who come to West Palm, we are not after giant snook or any of those epic saltwater species. We are, in fact, going to be chasing a very despise fish, but also a very sought after fish. I don't know how to explain these things. They can breathe air, they're hyper aggressive, they are all over South Florida, and they are, for lack of better words, not supposed to be here. Seeing as this is my first time ever chasing after one of these fish, I figured we link up with a fellow YouTuber and an angler by the name of Ryan Esquero. He's from this area, and he hit us up the other day. He's like, hey man, if you guys wanna do something creative, and try to catch a very weird fish species in an urban setting, let me know. So of course that's what we did. This fish species that we're gonna be going after today is the bullseye snakehead. I don't know too many people who specifically come to this area to try to catch a snakehead, but growing up as a kid, I've always wanted to do so. They are such strange fish. They're not supposed to be here, but they thrive in this ecosystem. And just about anywhere they live in these Florida waters, they dominate. Right now they should be kind of coming off the spawn. They're guarding their fry. They're incredibly good parents, and hopefully you guys can see that on camera today. There's no other fish like them. And by the way, if you are chasing after snakehead, make sure you know the difference between a snakehead and a bowfin. Bowfin are incredibly native. They're supposed to be here. Snakehead are not. And if you do catch a snakehead, eat them. They're incredible eating, and uh, I read something funny this morning. Apparently, they've got a medicinal value to them as well. I don't know if that's true or not, but we're not going to test that theory. Anyway, let's get all packed up, meet Ryan, and hopefully get one step closer to catching one of these crazy-looking fish. Ryan's stepdad owns a sandwich shop in town. It's closed, but he's yeah, still kind of open up, up for us. Yes, sir. What a freaking legend. By the way, this is Ryan. He's going to be uh, our saving grace. I've kind of explained to him what's been going on for the past couple days, and you don't seem too worried. No, we're going to crush him. That's, wow. But not an wow. empty stomach. Not an empty stomach. <laughs> no, not an empty stomach. I like it. Lunch and breakfast. Wow. Thank you so much. That is like beautiful. That is wow. like I really appreciate it. Uh, of course, of wow. course. I made you like a breakfast. Um, um, yeah, the breakfast sand sandwiches, you know, the crescent with the bacon, uh -huh. and um, those are turkey. Uh, I put mayo, Dijon, lettuce, tomato, turkey, and Swiss. Wow, All right. you and I got you some bacon. In the... Thank you, love you. Can I have espresso for the rock? I'll take an espresso shot if you don't mind, that'd be great. Cheers. Cheers, bud. Oh, it's really hot. You just faced that, bro. It's really hot. <laughs> you okay? Wow. You okay? It's really hot. I didn't know you were actually gonna drink it. I was just. Oh, I I'm gonna blow in mine a little bit. Wow. If you guys are in the area, come to Chris's shop. Espresso, sandwiches, cookies, everything's very authentic. He's from France, and a lot of the cuisine there is, is from his hometown, which is really cool. And he made his sandwiches. How sweet. How nice. Ryan did get third degree burns on that trip, though, <laughs> so I feel for him a little bit. Spot number one? Spot number one. We're, do we're doing on the fly. Yeah, I love fly. this. Fly or die. Fly or die. What are we looking for here? So we're walking the bank right now. Uh, we're looking for two giant logs picked up right on the bank. And a lot of times, what gives them up before I even see the snakeheads are little tiny air bubbles that come up. And that's, so these snakeheads are on fry about, they could either be a centimeter to, to four or five inches. They come up to the top of the water to breathe there because snakeheads breathe there. Yeah. Like that down that there, right there could a little be. surface. Yeah. What? What? Really? Giant snakeheads, giant snakeheads. Multiple? Go, 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 go. Anyway. They're right there, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see huge. They are huge. Should I take a cast from over here? They are huge. Yeah, try to get it over there. Oh, I got you. I see him. I see him. I see him. I see him. Oh, it's so No, it's fine. I'm behind him. It's fine. Wow, that was cool. I saw him. Their fry is right there. Those are. Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah, a couple yeah. hundred baby bullseye snakeheads. Wow. So they're gonna come back. Yep. They, they have to come back. Let, let's just ease off off yep. the bank. Yeah. We're at spot number one right now. 
we're basically in the backyard of suburban life. This is the zone that Ryan took us to. We pulled up, not more than 10 minutes. We've already seen two. All right, throw it right underneath that branch, pass like as far as you can. Okay. Oh, he's, he's coming right towards it. Yeah. He's coming right towards it. He's coming right towards it. He was charging it at first. Yeah, he's right. Is that two? Oh my God. It's a good one. I gotta get it right there, bro. That's... I don't know if he's hunting or what No, I think that's his, he's got, oh there's two. Oh my God. Yeah, that, those are his babies. Go, 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 he ate you. Did he? he you. I didn't see it. Oh my god, he you just sure? you in spit. Yep, yes, yes, 100%. Go, strip. What? Yes. He just got in. I bro. felt nothing. Yeah, I know. I'm just, no, for whatever reason, struggling with this heavy fly. I think I think it's actually good that uh, we're about to go peacock fishing, so you're, you're going to get the feel. Yeah, I need to. You know? I don't fly fish that much. All right, I blew my shot at probably five paired up snakehead, so if you want to multiply that by two, that's 10. 10 snake had a shot at. Still a little rusty with the flies. We're gonna remy that. We're gonna go chase after some peas in here. Is that what's in here? Big peacocks. Big There's pea some snake heads too, but we're after giant peas. Yeah. Sight fishing. Give us a couple minutes, get warmed up. I'm just, I don't know, I'm rusty. When we were tarpon fishing, it wasn't that bad. I mean, I'm obviously like, like not the best, but the snake heads, but let's get warmed up. Let's get that line tight. There he is, he's still there. There we go. Little pee. Go. Nice. First pee on the fly. It'd be funny. They were like eating the tail of it and then finally that one just choked it. So much fun. Peacocks are amazing, but they're even more amazing on a little five way. This is a little guy too. They get significantly bigger. Nice stuff. Just crush that, that little uh, conehead streamer. Gorgeous. Pond hopping for exotics. You just can't beat it. Hey, Jimmy, go back with your buddies. Got, there's one on me, John. Like, Still? Right on my, you. Oh, did you see that? That was gnarly. Oh, oh. Right there. It's so crazy. John and I are about to get the double. Come on, double up. Come on. Haven't even made it to the spot yet. It's the appetizer. So this is a really crazy fly. I found this thing like two years ago, sitting on a dock in the west coast of Florida. And now we're catching peas. Beautiful peacock, really pale bars running down her, but oh, off to a decent little start here. I'll see you later. Go back with your school, buddy. Mm -hmm. oh. There we go. Oh, yeah, Large mouth. Largey. Yeah, that was sweet. Decent little OMB. There's a bit of largemouth on some hair, too. So much fun. Not too many places you can catch peas and largemouth in the same cast. Not too bad. Chunky little dude. Kind of reminds me of how we started this trip in Orlando. Catching busies. Peace out, brother. Good one. Good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Good fish. That was crazy. That was crazy. Nice one. Yeah. He smoked it in like an inch of water. So cool. They are so epic, man. Everyone looks, every one of them looks so different too. Like you get some that are pale, you get some that are all like colored up, have blotches. Check it out. Beautiful pea, pond hopping for peas. Such fun. I don't think you can do anything else that's more fun as far as like inland freshwater fishing goes. Like these guys hum. You can catch them on lures, flies, live bait. They're such great fish. Wow. And this is coming from someone too, who's been to the Amazon and caught the big versions and also Ryan has too, and he still does this. Back you go, buddy. Gnarly. Whoo! Over there, dude. Yes, sir. So much fun. Thank you guys, that was awesome. One right there, stop, stop, stop. One right in front of you, one right in front of you. Oh yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. 
something. He's looking for something. He's looking for my spot. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. That was disgusting. Oh, my God. Look at that one. Look at that one. Oh, yeah, I see him. Oh, you on it. You got it. I got him. He ate no it. Way. He ate it. He no ate it, dude. Way. Instantly. <laughs> Instantly. Oh, he came undone. No. no. <laughs> dude, it hit the water and he was on. Oh. Dude, no wonder. Oh, a hook. What? <laughs> Broke the hook off. No way. That makes so much sense. John's hook is gone. I've just been teasing these fish, literally. <laughs> I was wondering why I wasn't getting hooked because they would eat it and I'd like kind of put a little tension. I wasn't fully strip setting, but like I wasn't feeling anything. <laughs> makes sense. No hook. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Yeah, so fired up. Here, take this. Oh, you got little it. one, little one, little one. That's the that's the female or the male. <laughs> Get, him, Get the big one. That was cool. Sounds good. <laughs> so much fun, dude. So I can tease on the fly, blind casting, sight casting. It's too good. Got him. Double. <laughs> is that is that her? Nope. Different one? Different one. No sh doubles. <laughs> Pushing P right here. Pushing P. <laughs> Double urban peacocks. That's nice up, bro. Oh, they are so yeah. hard to hold. Crushing. This is what we needed. We needed to just get that get that monkey off our backs and catch some peas. Just come come tight, no matter what we're catching. But this is uh this is what I'd rather be spotter? catching. Yeah, dude, look at that. Oh no. oh no, it's not. We caught one in here that has a smiley face on its tail, so we're seeing if we can catch him again. So epic. All right, see you, girls. See you, baby. I guess boy, boy and girl. <laughs> Kicked off like males. Honestly, I think those are both males. You think so? Yeah, I took a better look, yeah. Wow. Wow. I wish we had peas in Texas. You know they tried? <laughs> really? Yeah, they tried to stock them in Texas, and no it, it just it got too cold, but, you know. If I you can't get them in Texas, just come here. Wake up with a ride. In Florida, it's a little flight. Bank them. <laughs> that is so sick. Let's go, baby. Nice being sus. There we go. Got him. Got him. Oh, that was so cool. Ooh, airborne. Airborne. Throw another reel. <laughs> That's awesome. That is too much fun. Got a big boy. Got a big boy. Oh, it just came undone. Jesus, that thing is huge, dude. That thing is huge. That thing was spitting wake. Holy f dude, lots, lots is going on right now. Not even gonna take him out of the water. Just a quick little unhook and she's gone. Hey, take it easy, Bubba. See you later. Back down there. Hey, he's lit. <laughs> this is so awesome, man. We went from just like grinding our wieners off. We literally walked like three miles on a flat to catch a a reef tank fish and now we are just crushing the peas all on the hair too love fly fish i need to do more of it i'm a little rusty but after the first couple of fish it just kind of feels natural let's keep it going giant snake right here you see him bro head towards the bank yeah yeah i see him there you go keep bringing it to him keep bringing it now work this literally so so fast. slow how did it He's, he's, he's nose on it. 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 He's looking at it. Twitch. Tiny twitch. Tiny twitch. He's gonna suck it in. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. That's so sick, dude. That is so sick. <laughs> Holy <laughs> hell. That's awesome, man. What a cool fish. That was an epic eat, too. <laughs> they are awesome, man. Look at the death roll. Yeah. I didn't know they did that. They roll like catfish. Oh, that's not a bad one. Yeah. Really pretty fish. Unbelievable. That was the coolest thing, dude. Yep. Mondo worm, too. Let's go, baby. Is that what that is? Yeah. Mondo? Nice. Nice. Ooh. You're in his gill plate. So sharp. Oh, are they? Mm -hmm. Wow, they pull, man. <laughs> We're hooked up. I'm trying to land this guy. They are so powerful. They look like long and lean, but that is, that's all muscle. Like, they are just pure muscle. Yeah, I'm in his gill plates. That kind of sucks. All right, we're getting one, I think, yeah. Unreal. There we go. Nice. Let's go. We did it, dude. Congratulations. P is my first ever snakehead. It's like, you never, never, fishing is a never guarantee. And even though the conditions are perfect and Ryan's been doing eyes. this forever, 
You just don't know if you're gonna get one. Wow, dude, that's so gnarly. Woo! That is awesome, man. Grab that line. Thank you, man. Look at that, look at the stars, like the, oh. Wow, they are pretty. Even though they're not supposed to be here and they're super invasive, you cannot deny these guys fight hard, look incredible, and they're just gorgeous. And they're also extremely table fair. They're delicious. Yeah, really good eating. Super I read something too that they use them for like, uh, medicinal purposes too. I don't know if it actually oh, really? works. Yeah, like where they're native from, like huh. the people there uh, will eat them for, you know, just wellness. In the early 2000s, some like fancy seafood restaurants got in trouble because they passed these off as yellow edge grouper. No way. Yep. <laughs> people probably couldn't tell the difference because no, it's can't. so good. They're, they're delicious. Just as good as wow. like mangrove snapper, grouper. I mean, they're super good. And, and now something cool about this fish, you see these like little bits of turquoise. They only get that when they're spawning. So this one's all lit up. Normally... He wasn't paired up though. He was, no, he wasn't paired he was up, but, but this one's definitely spawning for sure. Yeah. We're about to. Yeah. Look at that thing, mean Dude, mugging you. <laughs> you can see how they get their names. Look, Just look at that point of view. Yeah, he's pissed. He's like, damn it, I fell for <laughs> it. We've had a lot of shots of this fish on the fly. In the morning, decided we just go with something I'm more comfortable with, grab the the Guggen rod and, and stuck him. Sure, Appreciate it, man. Yeah, no, that means so much to me. You have no oh, idea. Dude. My first ever snake. I knew it would happen, but oh, we're not done gosh. yet. We're not done yet. First ever, ever, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, that's. that's a good one. Oh, no, well, well, look, and, and that's why they call him a snakehead right there. <laughs> he slithered off into the water. That was probably the best release I've ever had on any <laughs> fish. Yeah, no, they're actually uh, land breathers. Well, not land breathers, they're air breathers. They can breathe air. Over 24 hours. Over 24 hours. So you guys might have been tweaking. Wow, you had that fish out of the water for quite some time. They can literally, you know, jump on land and come back. The whole myth of them crawling in the grass is not true. No. Right? Is no, it? Yeah. Do they actually. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, what? What happens is sometimes like hawks or something will come down and they'll grab one. Or sometimes, a lot of times people will, will just leave them on the bank to die. And I've been fishing and I see a snakehead all dried up. He's been in the sun for hours and hours. And I'll bring him to the water and he'll swim off like nothing ever happened. That is ridiculous, bro. Holy, Dude, is that, that really, a, is that really a mondo, mondo worm? Yeah, it's a mondo worm. Oh, we caught on a mondo worm. Here's a mondo Brian just hooked me up with a curl tail. I didn't realize it was a mondo worm, but yeah, that's a... Uh, might be one of the, have you caught them on Mondo's before? Oh yeah. Oh, I was gonna say yeah. that, I was, if it wasn't. Mondo with an underspin on a weighted EWG is one of my go-tos. You might be one of the first people to ever catch a snake on a Mondo. Well, let's catch another one on it. <laughs> See yeah. Oh, good spot. Where is he? He's way, he's like in that back corner. He looks like a palm leaf. Oh, wow. Yup, crushed it. That was dope. Nice job, bro. <laughs> that was sweet. <laughs> Oh, get him! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Head. That was sweet. On the fly too. On the fly. <laughs> That's so cool. Wow, I don't know how you. I don't know how you saw that fish. The fish was the fish yeah. laid up in an inch of water. That was so sick. He just ate that beautiful little snakey. Wow. I mean, I don't know. This is why they call them snakeheads. Watch this. And that is a snakehead for you. He just found his way back in the water. Let's catch some nice more. Nice job. That was really cool, man. I just like watching that go down. <laughs> oh my god. That's big snake. Big snake. Big snake. Keep studying. That's a giant, John. Big snake. That is a giant. Big snake. Big snake. That was so. Oh, he just pulled off. No. What the f no! He just pulled hooks! Oh! Hey man! That was a freaking giant. I know, I saw him. That was a freaking giant. How the sh do they pull hooks? You gotta keep sticking them. With those hollow bodies, they're kinda tough. God! Big one? Big as a drag. And we actually have the smaller one, which is a freaking good one. Oh, oh my, god, oh my gosh! That's beautiful. The biggest feet of the day, I think. And this is the smallest one of those. Dude, that big one is way bigger than. Yeah. This is the little one. Look at that. Two spotter. Gorgeous, Seriously dude. Cool Gorgeous. Beautiful fish. A little two spotter. This actually looks like a Popoco peacock because mm -hmm. he's got that black dot right there. So different species. But look how deep and dark and defined her bars are. Three bar. Go. There she goes. Last spot of the day. We're at a golf course. We fish neighborhood ponds, roadside canals, and this is where we're ending. This is true, like Florida 
hopping right now. This is Florida man vibes. This is Florida man vibes. Again, shout out to Ryan for taking me. This is uh, hopefully we're gonna seal the deal. Find him. What's this is in the here? Goal. Hopefully, big, yeah, we're, we're gonna try to stick this, with the this fly. This one, you have no idea. There's giant clowns, big peacocks, and the biggest snakeheads. We saved the best for last. So, all my favorite. Stay favorites. tuned, guys, because this is gonna be fishy. Ryan, what is it right now? Final sound. No, no, no. What is it right now? What is it? It's. It's lit. Oh, it's lit. <laughs> it is lit. <laughs> this is our last ditch effort. We're running across the green right now. John. I see him. You see that little open patch right I here? see the fish, yeah. John. What? Big snake right here. His head is right there. His head is right there. So just dip it? Oh, yeah. Just yeah, dip just put it. it. Put it, put it. No, no. Cast past him real quick. I'm going to be in the sludge. He's going to eat you. He's going to eat you on sight. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. He's going to eat you on sight, bro. Oh Take your time. Just put it on him. Oh He's going to eat you on sight. Put it back again. Oh my gosh. He can eat you on site. Don't worry about that. It's all reaction. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, no, he's there. He's there. This is your fish. Put it right on him. Gradually. Go! Got him. Yes, got him. No, no, don't horse him. Let him don't run. Let him run. Yep, let him run. run. Let him run. Oh my gosh. Yes. That was so yes. sick. Let that was run. so sick. That was so sick, baby. Let him run. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. I'm running back with him. Oh my god. Got him to the reel. Alright, reel. Get on the reel. Get yep. on the reel. Yep, yep, yep. That was so dirty. That was so dirty, yeah, baby. <laughs> that was That's so it. sick. He's in the grass oh right now. God. Oh, it's a giant. It's dog. a good fish. She's just in the grass. Do I horse her? What do I do? No, no, no. Just play her out. Okay. I'm she's... tight to her. I'm tight to her. Oh, she just came on oh. It's all good, bro. Hey, we had the chance. That's all that matters. Well, there's another one there. Dang. What what I do wrong? I mean, I don't know. No, I, no, no. I couldn't get it. I didn't want to put too much pressure on the grass. That's a good fish. Oh, send it back down there. Looks like I saw something come up on it. Cloud! 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 Oh my god! Cloud! Oh my god! On the cloud! Holy! <laughs> Oh, 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 dude, 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 oh my god, 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 dude, I've never caught a clown artificial in my life or on fly, and I've been living here That's the life. trifecta. Dude, <laughs> dude. We did not think that was going to happen. A oh freaking my god. clown. Look how wild these things are. Oh, oh my lord. <laughs> another, another Florida invasive fish species, they're like one of the few fish in the world that can swim backwards. Did not think we'd catch one on the fly. Oh, baby. That was so crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Holy hell. That's it, baby. Look at that. Yeah. I'll take that over a snake on fly any day. 100%. Coolest thing ever. They are such epic fish. Oh my gosh, another quick shot and we'll send them back in the water. Oh. That was incredible, bro. Welcome. What just happened, John? We just were going for snaking on the fly, and this guy came out of right field. Oh, Holy hell. Look at the size of that clown. That is epic. On the five weight. Such a crazy looking. Insane, thing. dude. Such a crazy Let's look. watch him swim backwards. Yeah. What an amazing way to end the day. Like, that's just stupid. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh. Oh, wow, they're hardy. I thought yeah. he'd be more fragile. He just, he just went. Put it there, yeah, man. man. <laughs> Thank oh, you, yeah, dude. dude. In the trifecta. Same. The crazy thing is, I literally was just about to say, I've caught one on live bait right on the edge before. Yeah. Never that close. I mean, if you were about, don't, I don't even know what just happened. I don't even know <laughs> what just happened. That was insane, bro. What a freaking day. That was insane. Oh, oh I want to give a huge shout out to, to Ryan for just coaching me through this whole process. Dude, Not 100. only fly fishing these waters, but then just fishing them in general is like, it's it's so unique. I've learned so much today. Caught all three. Went from <laughs> catching, never catching a clown, never catching a snakehead, catching very few peas in Florida on the fly that that to that. Holy. Oh, let's man. go, Thank baby. You, let's Woo. go. Casting concrete. We made it. We made it happen this morning. I said, we need to shake that wall. That's all we needed. Let's freaking go. Lucky fly. Lucky fly, unlucky angler. For my boy. Hey, right. thank you guys so much. Epic I appreciate it. Freaking send, man. First ever clown knife on the fly. And he's going to give it to me. That's very, that's very sweet, dude. That's Enjoy very it. sweet. Yeah. Hey, put it there. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Had some really good coaches today. It's kind of just saved the past couple of days. Really, we're just yeah. struggling, absolutely struggling. I like this part of Florida. It's a little more quiet. 
a lot of fishing opportunities, whereas Crazy. walking a flat for five miles for a box fish really is not the move. But anyway, on to our next destination. We got a four hour drive tonight. It's gonna be hectic, but uh, hopefully tomorrow it's all worth it. My buddy, Wes Davis, who lives in where we're going, uh, linked us up with uh, a guy I think is gonna put us on a nice little touch, a nice little cherry on top of this series. But we're gonna get all packed up and uh, heading on the road. See you guys there. Good morning, wieners. Welcome to our last and final stop for Casting Concrete Florida. We are in Jacksonville. This is a place I have visited very, very few times. Actually, I think last time I was here, I got kicked out of a bar at uh, Wes Davis's wedding. Haven't been back since, but we're not gonna be doing any of that. Uh, we're gonna be linking up with a friend of a friend, my buddy Wes, who films a lot for Guggen and uh, is a part owner, has a buddy down here who has been so kind and generous to take us red fishing. Uh, on the flats, or I guess on some of the, like the shoal beds and things of that nature around here in Jacksonville. Before I originally planned this trip, I wanted to try to catch fish that was endemic to each region of Florida that we went to. So, you know, peacock bass, obviously in Miami, you know, tarpon in Tampa, so on and so forth. And when I think of Jacksonville, I think of fishing skinny water for aggressive redfish. And that's hopefully what we're gonna get a chance to do today. And rather than kind of doing this on our own, like we tried to do in the Keys, <laughs> which ended up pretty miserably, uh, I figured we'd we'd at least link up with someone for the first part of the day who knows the lay of the land, who is a local, who's a native, and can just kind of give us a bit of a starting point for today. We're in it. This is a weird feeling, man. Like we stayed at a Holiday Inn, drove like less than 20 minutes, and now we're on the marsh. This <laughs> is crazy. Go. By the way, this is Greg. He is uh, he is going to be our our saving grace today, our guide. Thankfully, uh, anglers anglers alike have that that connection, and I connected with Wes, and Wes put me in touch with Greg, and he's been so kind last minute to take us out. He's, he runs a guide service out here, primarily fly fishing yeah. out here in Jacksonville. So if you guys want to come and do this, fish this cool stuff, and I have to travel that far, it's right here. So I'll leave, uh, I'll leave his Instagram down below and hopefully you guys have the opportunity to do what we're doing today. Like I said, this is our last day. So we're just gonna make the most of it. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna see if we can find fish. The condition's not necessarily ideal, like the water's dirty. You know, we've got some stuff against us, but you know, we're here and we're ready. And we're gonna just see if we can spin cast a few and just, uh, I don't know, smack a red or two. This is fun. I'm so glad we're here. I think this is a good way to end this whole series. Feels great, man. Oh, we were dying West Palm. Holy, there's one right there. Oh, he's spooked. Sorry. Damn, I was so subtle with that. Yeah, they're super spooky fish. They're super, super spooky. There's another one laid up here On that side? Oh, yeah, there he is. Yeah. Shoot. I just brought it off the grass so lightly, and he just. It was really close, though. That's the thing. Okay. Like, I didn't have much room to get in front of him. Distance. Yeah, I got you. What, like, even if I'm bringing it kind of to his side, or does it have to be in that, like, I would try and keep it like at least six feet or okay. six inches away from it. Okay, gotcha. Like just coming by them, that's enough for them to like lunge on it. I see. Um, it's, that's what's tough about Jackson. I was like, so there's a lot of bait, which you've already seen. There's a lot of bait. Yep. And the fish don't have to work very hard, so they don't. They're not going to chase stuff. You know, I see. They're not going to yeah. chase your, your stuff. Maybe a topwater plug because they really want to hammer it. But uh, yeah, they're not going to like run it down. They're sitting and waiting. Yeah, so that's why it's so difficult. Like, There's one right there. Got him. That was so sick. He ate it. That was so cool. <laughs> yeah, he was just roaming the bank. That was dirty. <laughs> we were hooked up, baby. This is like my favorite type of fish, and I always tell people like, if I could catch two fish the rest of my life, it'd be redfish and striper. They are so epic. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I saw him go on top of it, and I just felt slack. And I was like, "Oh, he's got it." <laughs> what a beautiful moment that was! Incredible. The green. Oh my gosh, dude! Super skinny water, Jacksonville marsh fishing. It's just like the best thing ever, man. Being able to visually watch a fish eat your lure is pinnacle. Everyone loves it. 
sweet. <laughs> nice job, dude. Good job, bro. Thank you so much, yeah. Greg. Yeah, no worries. Sincerely appreciate it. Wow. He, he ate the gulp. He <laughs> ate the gulp. There we have it. That was one of my goals this trip is to catch a redfish. Like I said at the beginning of this video, we've caught a lot of fish that have come unexpected, but this one was on the agenda and we made it happen. Huge shout out to no Greg worries. for pulling around, showing us his waters and uh, giving us a taste of what Jacksonville is all about. Absolutely crushed the artificial shrimp. Beauty. See you buddy. Thank you for tugging. Awesome. <laughs> that felt so good. Put it there. That was very rad. Saw that fish for, well, actually we saw one in the mud, in the dirty water, made a cast, turned on it, didn't eat, couldn't connect. And we're coming around this little point right behind some oysters and this guy was just cruising the bank. A lot of uh, my first attempts at these fish have been pretty much duds, just kind of getting the rust off as we have the entire trip. But that worked out. That fish saw it, he was hungry, he was willing. Made it happen. That was so gnarly. Oh yeah, yeah, I see another. It's too close to him. Sorry, boys. Yep. Coming back that way. Oh, another one now. Yeah. There's that one all the way up there too. Got him. Got him. That was so sick. Just felt scared you were pulling too fast. Just felt slack. That was wild, man. That was wild. Yeah, there's plenty. That was so cool. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> there's quite a few back here. There's another nice one right there too. Yeah, this pocket is stacked. So much fun. Uh, no, I got him. He should be straight. I got him. I'll just give her a little belly hug there. This one's not fighting as hard as the last one. Come. Yeah. <laughs> I know, all the mud, yeah. It's so wild. Hey, right, buddy. There we have it. Redfish number two. That was dirty. We just pulled in this pocket, and there was a lot in here. Took a shot at two. Those guys were not interested, but this guy was all about it. Such cool fish. If you've never caught a redfish before, you need to get on it. And this is probably the best scenario to do it. Come in the shallow water, pull around, and uh, bring a fly or a little, a little scramp and crush them. Back in the water she goes. So cool. He's even got like grass on him. It's so shallow. Yeah. He's got like. A on his back. Yeah, I saw that. This, this, what, we're, what we're fishing in was just so shallow, and you know these fish are quite literally dragging in the mud, looking for crabs and shrimp and just about anything they, they can eat. So when you pull a fish up like that, he's like got sediment on him. And look at my line too. It's just like nothing. It's just really mushy bottom, but in that bottom is food for these fish. So that's the reason why we're up here. We just moved a couple. They're out off the bank some. Yeah, just keep an eye. Keep an eye to your left too. So like, do like a, you know, 10 to 2. The, the whole idea behind this fishing is it's it's very visual oriented. You know, it's not like bass fishing where you flip to a log and then you just kind of guess, ah, oh, there could be a bass there and you sit and wait. This is hunting at its finest. Like hunting without actually hunting. It's, it's hunting for reds. And we're in skinny water looking around. You've got Greg up top pulling. So he's like has a little bit more elevation than I do. I've got some elevation on the bow and we're just scanning this water. Some are on the bank, some are often in the, these oyster beds. And you just have to think fast, make a very calm cast in a general area that's near its head and, and want to bring that, that bait kind of in front of that fish, but not directly in front. There's a lot of technical stuff that goes into this, especially when you incorporate the fly. But just using little tiny shrimps, little tiny artificial shrimps, weighted on a weedless hook, seven foot, and green rod and that's kind of the process obviously i just dumped it down but generally speaking that's what we're doing you're just using your eyes to find these fish not a whole lot of blind casting matter of fact none at all so we've just uh just gonna get on this stretch and see what we can see like up there yeah, 
He just ate it. That was cool. He just ate it. That was so sick. <laughs> Line just went slack. That was dirty, man. <laughs> Let's go. Holy. Holy. There you go. There she is. Oh, wow. So green. So green. Or I guess so red. <laughs> that was an awesome little scenario. This is kind of our last spot of the day. Last ditch effort to get another fish. Honestly, like I was content with just a cast of a singular redfish today. And we, here we have three, three, three in the boat. Um, we spooked some really good fish on this flat earlier. They pushed off, some were pretty decent. And then we came back just to revisit to see if they set up and saw the wake of, I don't know if it was this one or another one, but saw the wake and just kind of gave a blind, blind cast in there. And she wanted it, absolutely charged it. These redfish are just one of those fish where if it's a 20 inch it's fun, and if it's a 40 inch it's fun. They're just such cool fish, man. And they're full of aggression. Come here, buddy. So sick. Dude, this has been so much fun. I didn't think we'd be able to get to do this. I was like, I, was like, oh, I want to catch redfish when you come to. Dude, there's one sitting right here, John. Is there really? I swear to you, I'm watching a tail right here. Oh, I, see, I can, see, I can see it from right here. Yeah, the stand up is right there. Oh, yeah, give me a minute. Yeah, he's right there. There's two of them. Is it really? Yeah. Oh. Dude. Dude. He sees it. Spooked. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I can see him from all the way down here. Did you guys hear that? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but this fish is literally drumming underwater. They make that weird noise. Do you know why they do that? I don't know. It's weird. Uh, she's gone. So cool. Wieners, you freaking did it. Put her there. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, no worries, Seriously, yeah. incredible. Like it's always a treat. It's always a freaking treat chasing after these things. And you can do, you can catch redfish a lot of different ways. You can go off the coast when they're when they're schooling, and they are widespread throughout the United States. But if I had to pick one way to fish them, no matter what the size is, it's this. You know, just creeping around in these little salt salt marshes and in inches of water, and then watching them pale watching them wake. It's just, it's really incredible. And you can do on the fly, light tackle today, we're just using a bass rod and it gets the job done. But that was insane. Freaking so much fun. Three redfish, did not expect that. Thank you so yeah, much, no brother. Worries, no worries, That Good was time. awesome. Good time. You ever in Texas, let me know. Yeah, yeah, for I don't, sure. I don't know if you have any fish down there, but- Maybe. Big bass will make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> so good. Seriously, thank you so much. We got her done. Huge shout out to Greg and Wes for making this all happen. Three redfish when our anticipations were literally this slow. We've gotten kicked. We've gotten kicked around. We've got our ass absolutely beaten up. We are staying in the city for literally one day and then trying to figure out how to catch fish with just about no knowledge. I mean, we are linking up with some really awesome people, some guides, and they are kind of teaching us and walking through the process of how to fish these cities around Florida. But for the most part, I would say we would just kind of jump into this. So like the times we've gone canal fishing for those peas, it's like kind of, just, I don't know, maybe we can catch them, maybe this will work. So it's really tested, I feel like, my angling ability and my ability to kind of work on the fly and film a video because the worst thing ever is not only not catching fish but not only catching fish for you guys all right this next fishing mission we're on is a little less technical not doesn't require as much skill per se as a redfish mission one thing we're going to need to get before we do this or at least attempt to do this is we need to get some baits so we're at the bait store right now we've got a couple options some varieties you know i am i'm not stuck on one style of bait for example i like my bun length Franks, these are good, these are great. It just depends on kind of what the overcast is doing. If it's cloudy, if it's a bit drizzly, I like sticking with the bigger profile, the more slender profile. Um, if it's sunny out, I like to go subtle. So what we have over here is some micro glizzies. These are also very effective as well. Don't sleep on the micro glizzies. And you know, if all else fails, one thing you can always count on is um, where to go. Oh, of course, your smart dogs, plant-based for all you, uh, you vegan folks out there. This is really, really what comes in the clutch if the tried and true doesn't pull through. We've got some variety here. We're gonna take uh, our fresh bait and we're gonna go to the ponds and see if we can make something happen. <laughs> uh, I have a good feeling we might get kicked out of this spot as we have just about every spot we've been to in Florida, but Caleb actually used to live here and come here in Jacksonville quite some time and he had a hot tip. A big, ugly, elusive fish that lives in this pond just behind you guys. So we're gonna see if we can catch one of these guys. There's two. Dude, he followed the hook. We spotted a couple bass on our epic carp mission, which ended up being an epic failure. And uh, we 
spotted some LMBs that seem to be interested in our wieners, plant-based wieners, that is. These are about um, one and a half inch micro glizzies, which is like honestly pretty big. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my little circle hook that I normally use for live bait and I'm just breaking off a little piece. That's like probably about medium size and uh, we're just gonna thread it through there. Hopefully this fish likes something that's a little bit more natural. I don't think uh, these bass are vegan, if I'm being completely honest. And I'm about to run out of daylight too. There we go, got her, ate the glizzy. We got a glizzy bass. <laughs> that is so sick, dude. <laughs> well, didn't think we'd bring hot dogs to a pond and catch this. That is so stupid, dude. That is so stupid. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think we're ending Florida casting concrete with a hot dog caught on a bass. We are ending the trip how we started, catching one of my favorite fish, largemouth bass. I know it's so cliche, but the, the emphasis I've been trying to make this whole time, actually, let me put this guy back real quick. See you later, bud. Thank you. I won't tell your bros you just ate a glizzy. It's between me and you. <laughs> the emphasis that I've been trying to make this whole series is it's important to go out there and have fun. I grew up in the suburbs. Most of what I fished was stuff like this. I fished a lot of concrete waters, waters that were basically surrounded by sidewalk, and it's how I got into fishing, and I think one of the things I'm trying to drive home to all of you is this is how people get started fishing. Not everyone has the, the luxury to live out in the Tennessee mountains or in Southwest Texas where there's crystal clear blue water, you know, grow up on like the keys. So, I mean, I'm just trying to, I guess, thought this whole series, trying to just show you guys, you can do fun stuff like this. You can have fun. You don't have to catch big fish. You don't have to catch many fish. Just go out there, get a buddy, get your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your sister, your brother, and go explore some urban waters. Today's the day we leave. It's the 17th. We had a pretty fulfilling day yesterday. But I woke up, stretched a bit, came out here to look outside this this window, had the beautiful view of Top Golf, and I noticed down there at the pond, that is right next to the Holiday Inn that we're staying at, was a little something, a little grass cart. The fish we were after yesterday just decided to greet us right before we leave. I got a bone to pick with this fish. I'm not giving up. I got a flight in four hours, but I'm gonna make an attempt to catch one of these fish. It's a tradition that every casting concrete, we end on a car. Yeah. It's going down, baby, it's going down. Here we go, ready? Here we go, here we go. Got him, got him, got him. So sick. <laughs> This is how, this is how you close casting concrete, baby. <laughs> it is, I think we have to always make this tradition. Chasing after carp on our last and final day. That was so freaking cool. Just a little tiny grass carp. Normally they eat grass, but a lot of, in a lot of lakes they get fed like bread and crackers or hot dogs. And we weren't able to catch one last night, so this is an amazing way to to end the series and to part ways with Florida. Whatever. This one's young too. It's a young buck, so he's ripping and ready to go. Take a look at that. <laughs> this is how you close casting concrete. They are not the most sought after fish here in Florida, or I guess widespread, but they have a special place in my heart. Oh my God, right on cue. They're so full of energy, piss and vinegar. And this is just a little one. They get up to 70 pounds. They're such cool fish. Primarily they eat insects and grass, but in this case, ate some of that good old white bread. Unreal. They're really pretty. They got that incandescent in their uh, scales. They're cool fish, man. Don't believe they're native, but they're wicked fun to catch. Back she goes. Gotta get in the water. <laughs> Woo! That was so cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is how you close Casting Concrete Volume 2. I just want to say thank you to everyone who tuned in and watched this little series and watched the previous one we filmed all over Texas. It means so much when you guys tune in, comment, and share your opinions and thoughts. I'm not sure where we're going to film the next Casting Concrete, but that's where you come in. Drop a comment down below. Vote on where you think we should film another one of the series. This was so much fun. I don't even know how many species we caught, but we caught well over 10. We caught well over 30 fish. Met some amazing people, traveled all over Florida, and this is an experience I will truly never forget. And it happened all right here in the concrete jungle. Thank you so much for the view. I'll catch you guys in the next one. 
as always folks keep fishing never stop